enjoying one another, how they sat embracing, how they sat and standing to praise the Lord, and standing to how they got into his gate with praise, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I thank God for another day, another opportunity. Hallelujah. I thank God for the breath of life that He has given to us. I thank God for protecting us throughout the night. I thank God, hallelujah, for being with us. I thank God for the blessing that He has for us today. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for whatever is needed today. It's already met. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you came. Hallelujah. For the need of healing is already here. The healer is here. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are in need of deliverance, the deliverer is here. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. To bring that strength. 
Say good morning. good morning. It's time to praise him. I want you to cross the area and greet one another in the name of Jesus. Take a couple of minutes and tell somebody God loves you. Take a couple of minutes. Hallelujah. the area. If you were sitting over here, I want you to move over there and go greet some people. If you were sitting over here, I want you to move over there and go greet some people. Hallelujah. No favoritism in the place. And if you're in the middle, go ahead and stand in the middle. Somebody will touch you. Hallelujah. our scripture this morning Woo! and the saints of God give him praise hallelujah glory be to Jesus looking at Psalm 145 this scripture has come up more than once this week and it has blessed my heart every time Psalm 145 declares I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your ma majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. 
He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord. And your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the, maj the majesty and glory of your reign. Hallelujah. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let this be a worship and praise session proclaiming of who he is. I want you to know it's not hype. But when you think about his goodness, you cannot help. As I told them, the words of Psalm 145 just dance in your mouth. It dances in your mouth of who he is. You will tell of his mighty deeds. You will tell of his wonderful acts. And I don't know, when I'm talking about something good, all of a sudden my shoulders start moving, the hands start flailing, because I'm talking about somebody that's great. Let this be the same thing as we worship together. Hallelujah. You know this. Hallelujah. Hey.
is nobody bigger Sonia, just sing, your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus, risen from the dead. You are the glory, the lifter of our head. You have the only name by which we can be saved, my God. You Jesus. Johnny, why don't you sing it? Your name. Your name is Jesus, risen from the dead. You are the glory, the lifter of our head. You have the only name by which we can be saved. I call you Jesus. My God such a powerful name the bible says all authority has been given to that name all authority on heaven and on earth that everything would bow before the name of jesus and even we ourselves we bow before the name of jesus for man can only be saved through that name there's no other salvation found it's only found in jesus he is the son of the living god he is the blood of the Lamb. Your name is Jesus, risen from the dead. You are the glory, the lifter of our head. You have the only name by which we can be saved. I call you Jesus. like I've never known your name gives me hope when my world begins to fold your name makes my heart spring forth with an overwhelming joy it's because of your name that that I'm free and now my life has been restored Jesus Savior Holy One how awesome is your name majestic is your reign and I cry Jesus, Savior, living word, your name. Something happens when I call on your name. Personal testimony there. Now somebody sing from their testimony. Hey. Your name brings peace. Brings peace. A peace like I've never known. A peace like I've never known. Oh, your name, your name gives me hope. Gives me hope. When my world, when my world begins to fall. Your name makes my heart spring forth.
something happens. Something happens when I call your name. Oh, something happens when I call. Something happens, something happens when we call on your name. That's the part right there. Something happens when we call on his name. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're in the middle of, however overwhelmed you feel, however discouraged you are, how, how afraid you are, how much pain you're carrying in your body or in your heart, something happens when we call on his name. His name is so powerful that just when we mention it, something happens. It, it hey. changes our focus. It, it shifts what we're, what we're experiencing because we recognize that the one who has all joy, the one who has all peace, the one who has all of the hope, and we just have to call on his name. So I want to give you a little more time to respond because I've, I've got a feeling that some of us need something to happen. You need something to happen. I don't know what that something is. I don't know if it's healing in your body. I don't know if it's reconciliation in relationship, if it's provision, if it's, if it's a new start, if it's, if it's a new hope, or just maybe you just need to refocus today and you need something to happen. I want to open up the altar. It's, it's nothing special except that it says, God, we're coming to you because we're coming in faith and we trust you that when we come and we call on your name, something will happen. I don't know if that something is a miracle or if that something is God just putting a little arm around you that says, I've got you. Hey, don't worry. Hey. Or if it's discouragement turning to joy or if it's sadness turning to peace. I don't know what it is, but something happens. So if you want to come this morning and just say, Lord, I need something. So I'm just going to come and call on your name. You don't even need to spell it all out. Just come and just say, Jesus, Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need something from you today, God. I I'm lacking in some way. I need something. I don't know about you, but I, I need something from you, Lord. 
restore my hope. Build up more of my peace, God. Give me more of your joy. I need something to happen. Don't, don't be shy. Don't worry about what other people are thinking, what they're going through, where they're at. This is you and the Lord this morning that says, God, I, I need something. I'm not ashamed to say it. I need you, Lord. I, I need something from you this morning. I need you. Lord, we need you. How I need you.
Lord, we thank you that we can call out to you. Yes, Lord. That you have made a way, Lord, for us to have access to you, to be able to come and lay ourselves before you, lay our burdens, to come with prayers and petitions, to, to come, God, with our needs, to come lacking, God, but to be able to receive from you, to be able to be filled by you again and again that you have given us, God, that ability to, God, experience your joy, experience your peace. You've shared your wisdom. You've shared your strength. God, and we thank you for these things today. And I thank you, God, that, that you've been touching those here today and those watching, God, as they've called out to you, Lord, you are making something happen in our lives. And Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We walk in faith, God, that, that that's something will continue, that you will continue to provide. You will continue to pour out. You will continue to work, God, even in ways that we may not see, God, when it doesn't happen in the time that we experience we might expect God we still trust you when it doesn't happen in the way that we want it God we still trust you because we know God that you are in control and you are powerful and you are mighty and your name is awesome and so we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor God and with the fruit of our lips we give you praise and we call out to your name Jesus 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 have your way in this place, we pray your today. Name. In Jesus' name. this time and do something very special today we are going to have a baby dedication amen and so I want to invite young Kair Bo Pearson to bring his parents Terrell Pearson and his mother Brittany Porter and what other members of the family want to come on up you can come and join them and we're going to take this time to dedicate Kair this morning before the Lord as his parents are choosing to take this step together in front of you all and in front of the Lord this morning. He's looking good, isn't he? Y'all see him up there? Amen. Amen. Let me, let me uh, read from Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 4 through 9. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Verse 7 says, Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your, the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So we see clearly instruction from the word of the Lord that we are to teach our children. We are to raise them up in the way of the Lord. We are to instruct them in the scriptures. And we are to live that example before them. And so this dedication of, of this little one this morning is, is really, as I've shared with the family, it's, it's really about the parents the extended family saying we're making the choice to dedicate this young one to the Lord this morning he probably won't remember this day and he's not making this choice yet for himself but they're saying we want to raise him up in the Lord that they recognize that ultimately he came from the Lord without the Lord's creation and the, and the work in their lives he would not be here today and they have the honor of raising him on the Lord's behalf stewarding that gift of a child that says, Lord, we want him to know you and to be instructed in your ways. And so 
real simply, you've got a few responsibilities that I just want to make sure we're clear on before you make this commitment today. First, you have the responsibility yourself to be faithful to the Lord. Amen? And then you have that, that additional responsibility in your faithfulness to, to set an example. Children learn from what we do, how we behave, and how we act, and the things we say. You have that responsibility to be an example before him. And you also have the responsibility to, to be a trainer, to, to really be the lead disciple maker in his life, to show him and to teach him from the word of God. And then you have to keep him before the Lord always in prayer and petition. And, and even when he gets old and grown and bigger than you, like some of our kids, you still are responsible to pray. Even when you can't control their outcome and you don't have as much control on their behaviors, you still pray and you trust God. Amen. And so with those charges before you this morning, we take this time to affirm your commitment today to dedicate Tahir before the Lord. And I just want to ask you a couple questions so you can commit before the body here. Uh, do you all love the Lord, desire to serve him with all your heart, soul, and mind? If you do, say yes. And are you committed to training him up to, to love the Lord and to love others? And do you commit to setting a good example with God's strength to show him what it looks like to follow the Lord Jesus? Amen. And with those commitments, we ask you as a church body to also, if you would, commit to praying not only for Kair, but for his parents, and for his family, and for all the children that we together are trying to disciple and raise by our example of following the Lord. So as a body, if you're willing to commit to do that with us this morning, would you just respond by saying yes? Amen. Amen. All right, well, this is my favorite part. I'm going to take the little man here. You ready? You want to preach? You praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Come Show on, them praise, how to worship. Praise, okay, praise. just put your hands. Say, I surrender. Hands lifted in praise. I surrender. Come on. Yes. Yes. Okay, man, we're going to pray, okay? Can we pray? Hallelujah. Join with me in, in this prayer. Father, this is a special moment to join with Kair's parents and family in this congregation, Lord, to choose to commit this young one before you. Lord, we know that you have brought his life into this earth, that he was fearfully and wonderfully made that you knew him from the moment he was conceived in his mother's womb, and you have plans for his life. Even as he came into my arms, raising his hands to you, Lord, we pray that, that he would have a life of surrender to you, a life that is committed to worshiping him in his words, in his actions, and in the intentions of his heart. I pray that his heart be kept pure before you though there's evil and darkness all around in this world, Lord, that you would keep his heart pure, that you would protect him from efforts of the enemy to, to draw him away from you, Lord, and you would give him, God, the, the courage of David to continue to press after you, even when others are questioning it, even when others are lacking faith. God, I pray that you would give him that courage to stand strong, God, to be different in, in a godly way to be faithful, to be committed. And I pray that you use the gifts you've given him to, to serve and to bless others, God, as he develops them, as he grows, God, that you would use them for your glory, God, and give him great influence throughout his life. God, keep him in good health. Watch over his family. Unite them more closely together as they draw closer to you. Allow them the strength and the wisdom to disciple him and they grow in their faith even as they care for his, his life. And help us as a church to represent to him, God, what it means to follow you and to love you with all of our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You did great, man. Good job.
want to take this time and just officially welcome everyone. Look around. I think we may have a few new faces out here with us. So we want to be hospitable and welcome you properly. So if you are here for the very first time, we just ask you to put your hand in the air and give us a little wave. And we just want to thank you for coming. Hey, all right. Praise God. We got, we got folks in every section. I like that. I like that. Well, Silent Dove family, what do we like to say to our visitors? We love you with the love of the Lord. We hope you feel our love. Even more than that, we hope you feel the Father's love this morning as he's brought you here for a purpose and a reason, and we're glad that you've joined with us. We are the Silent Dove Church. Our commitment and our, our desire is to be spirit-led and compassion-driven in all that we do, and that's who we are with God's help. Amen? Amen. Next thing uh, is that we want to take this time to give back to the Lord practically, tangibly, uh, in the form of our offerings, our financial gifts. And let me just say, we don't do this because it's a ritual or a routine. We, we're not asking you to do this because you're obligated to or, or because we need you to do this or do that. No, this is a, a response of worship. It says, God, we are grateful for what you have done in our lives, and we want to bless you, and we want to be a part of the work you're doing. It's, a, it's an unselfish sacrifice. That's what worship is. It, it says, God, I'm surrendering because I want what you desire more than what I desire. I'm sure you could come up with a list of things to purchase with the, the amount of, of giving you would give today. But you're saying, no, God, instead of that, I want to make sure I'm blessing others and I'm blessing your work. And so that's why we take this time to give. You can give here in the baskets if you want to give in person today. If you'd rather give online, you, you see the QR codes on the screen. You can go to the sign of the dove.org. You can go through Cash App at TSODWK. -T -S However you want to do it, it doesn't matter. We just want you to do it lovingly, cheerfully, and gratefully. Amen? Amen. So would you stand to your feet as you prepare to give? I'm going to pray over the offering and ask God to bless what we give today. And then uh, during the offering time, after, they, after you come forward, if you choose to do so, or if you're ready to send your kids downstairs, we're taking the three-year-olds to 11-year-olds in children's church, and then also our teenagers are meeting in their small groups today. So um, basically, 3 to 18, you get to go downstairs and, and connect with some peers and learn about the Lord and his work in your life together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to be a part of contributing, God, to the work of your kingdom. I pray that you would challenge us, God, to, to give generously, sacrificially, cheerfully. I pray that none of this would be done just casually or, or, or any way feeling pressured or obligation, but God, it would be done out of our heart's desire to want to bless you. Show us how we can be more generous, how we can be more giving. And take these gifts, God, use them for your glory. Meet the needs that we have. Meet the needs of those that we're trying to contribute to around the world. God, and as your word said, Lord, you, you promised to bring more back, not for our own gain, but so that we can continue to bless others. And so we want that cycle to continue. We want to be a vessel of blessing that you flow in and through, God, so that your name is glorified and your work is advanced on this earth. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So just come as you wish, back and forth, and children, you can make your way downstairs, and the next voice you will hear will be our own minister, Brent Stackhouse, bringing us the word.
Praise God. Good morning. Can you all hear me? I have been battling a cold this past week, so my ears are a little clogged, and I can hear a little bit, but it's foggy, so I want to make sure you guys could hear me. Amen. Praise God. Can we open up with prayer? Everybody stand on your feet, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the opportunity to speak to your body, your children this morning. Lord God, I thank you for the privilege and honor of, of using me. Father, I pray that your word that's spoken today would truly be your words, not my words. Father God, I pray that your spirit will communicate the message that needs to be heard and the hearts, Lord God, that need to be um, touched this morning would be touched in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. May your anointing be in this place. Your presence has been here all morning, Lord God, and we thank you for your presence. I thank you for the sweet spirit that I feel in here this morning, Lord God. And we just want to honor you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I, I am honored to be able to, to speak with you all this morning. Um, as every preacher says, I won't be before you long. My wife is timing me. She said, you better not be. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm excited to bring the word to you this morning. Um, I, worship was just something this morning for me. I don't know about you. Um, but it just blessed my, my spirit. Um, it really, really, really blessed my spirit. And so we are going to be coming from the book of Acts today, Acts chapter 16. Um, and we're going to read this scripture, and then I'll kind of get into the, to the meat of it. Today, I can tell you, is about encouraging, challenging um, you in the same way that God has been challenging me with this very passage. Amen? Uh, most of you all have heard this story before, um, and it's been preached in a way that talks about worshiping through trials, and we're going over when Paul and Silas were in jail. But there were some other things that I got from this, as I saw, that really relate to what we've been as a church teaching about our responsibility in reaching others. Um, so let's dive in. We're going to start with verse 16. Uh, it is Acts 16, verse 16. It says, once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept us up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and they're throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. If that don't sound like cancel culture today. Uh, after they have been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded, uh, thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. I don't know what they were singing, but if it was today, they were probably like, How awesome is your name? Majestic is your reign. I said, All right. Suddenly, 
there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? My opening question to you is, would the jailer have called on you? Would you have been the one the jailer came to? There were obviously other prisoners in this prison because they were listening to Paul and Silas, praise, worship, pray. Who knows what they had been in there? Some of them could have been career criminals. Like, who are these fools in here? But there were more people in this prison than just Paul and Silas. So my question to you is, would the jailer have called on you? Now, I'm going to tell you, had I been Paul or Silas, I can't honestly say they would have called on me. Because if I did a good deed, I just set this woman free. And then I get beaten. It didn't even say just flawed. They used severely flogged. That's another level of flogging. For doing a good deed. And then you throw me in jail. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you felt you were unjustly treated or the, the consequences were unjust for the good deeds you felt that you did? You ever been there? How many of you all were just excited and worshiping God for the struggle and the trial at that moment? You go through something, right? If, if my wife accuses me of something I didn't do, I, I'm in my emotions for a little bit. Like, what are you talking about? I... And so I started to look at, man, what was different about Paul and Silas? What was different about them? I'd have been complaining. But here's something that I want to lay the foundation with. God had an appointment for that jailer. God had an appointment for that jailer. Paul, Silas were not in a one-on-one -on -one basis with this jailer. I'm sure they didn't know him like that. But God had an appointment for this jailer. There are people that you will come in contact with that God has an appointment for. It's not always people you know. It's not always people you're familiar with. But God has an appointment for them. And when there's an earthquake or an all of the sudden in their life, so where they're shaken up, are they going to come to you or try to find somebody else that believes something else just to try to help them make sense of whatever it is they're going through? Because how often does that happen in life, right? People are always going through things. They're always seeking a freedom, a relief, an answer, but they're not always seeking God because they don't know that God is what they should be seeking. Or they're seeking God but not Christ because there are many gods. So how do they know? This really got to me because I thought about how, how
day to day in our lives, we allow what's going on to dictate how we respond to each other, life in general, even just our facial expressions of being unapproachable. But when we know who we are in Christ, when he's begun that transformation, transformative work, and we, even through our struggles, are connecting with the truth of who he is in us and relying on him to, to bring us through, people see that. People see that. Um, I, growing up, uh, I was always the church boy in the group. And it was funny because people would always come to me for advice. And this is when I was young. Friends be going through stuff, kids at school, and they would just come talk to me. And I was like, what is it? But I was different. I lived my life different. Even though I wasn't always walking in the fullness of Christ, there was definitely something different about how I lived my life to others that caused people that you wouldn't even think would come to me to come to me. Freedom has a cost. Your freedom in Christ had a cost. Cost Jesus on the cross. Our freedom in this country comes at a cost of somebody saying, I'm willing to become the property of the United States government and sacrifice myself to what could be the point of death, which is why we even celebrate Memorial Day. Those who have served and died for us. The death part was like, yeah, okay. But it was the property part that got me because when you're in the, the, the U.S. government, there's a training, a regimented training slash brainwashing that happens. And this is how you need to do everything. X, Y, Z. And I'm training you this way because a time could come eventually will come where I'm going to need you to be able to execute in this manner. And not in the manner that you came in here with, with the mindset that you came in here with, but what I'm putting in you, training you to do in order to protect the freedoms of this country. The people that God has an assignment for, in a lot of cases, is going to cost us some of our freedom. And in the same way, in the word here, that God is transforming us, there are ways that we need to be locked into the word to understand how to walk this thing out so that when the time comes, we are prepared. We're conducting ourselves in a manner that is congruent with the truth of who God is to us. We live in a society now that is really all about um, I, I, it's really the idea of church, the comfort of church, like you're supposed to go to church, you get the feel goodness of church, but when we start talking about looking at how they respond when situ and you could just look at social media just look at social media some of the posts from the, the exact same people about being at the good service on sunday boo and then when they going through something the way that they're laying that out on social media you're like is this the same person are we serving the same god but they haven't been stripped of who they are to learn to walk in the trueness of who God is 
in order to live that out in these tough times. Serving God when everything's cool is, is easy. People's freedom is tied to you. Matthew 5, 16 says this, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We don't know when they're watching, who is watching, but people are watching. People are watching. People are needing, looking for something different, something genuine, something authentic. And that's what Paul and Silas gave. Like, man, in the midst of this trial, this thing that you've been out here going to the house of prayer, preaching about, speaking about, that's causing an uproar. People are talking about it. We see you are standing on it in the darkest of times. In the darkest of times you're standing on it. So that when God shook the earth, when God broke the chains... The jailer's eyes were open. God wants to use us in that way. And look, we don't have to manufacture hard times. We, we, we have hard times. We don't have to manufacture them. We don't have to go looking for them. You don't have to ask to be severely flogged or beaten or thrown in jail. You have hard times right where you are that God is saying, stand firm, Worship me, trust me, show the world I am God. Philippians 127 says this. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. What's in you will come out of you. So when he talks about conducting yourself in a worthy manner of Christ, what's in you is going to be what comes out of you. The training they go through in the military, they are putting something in you. So when the rubber meets the road, that's what comes out of you. How many people with military background we have here? Am I lying? I, I saw this TikTok, cracked me up. There's this guy named Calvin Grimes. He goes into like grocery stores and stuff and just pranks people, right? He, and some people know, they smile like, yeah, Calvin, crazy. He is. He went up to this one man and I can't even remember what he did to the man. And the man was like, and then the man, I don't know if the man recognized him or started laughing. He said, hey, man. He said, I'm, I'm ex-military. He said, I'm trying to kill people. I almost killed you. He, he, he said, I'm trying to kill people. I almost killed you. This was a joke to you, but like, you almost died. <laughs> What's in him was about to come out of him. And he was an old guy. So he had been well out of the military, you could tell. But he still was like, everything they put in me, I still can activate to deactivate you. <laughs> what are we? Putting in ourselves. How are we taking what is preached on Sundays? Words we get throughout the week. And using those to transform our mind and grow. So that when the storms come. We're going to react in a way. That is going to lead people to the cross. People will talk. You should too. 
one of the biggest things I've seen, and this is even with me, right? I, I don't, I'm not going to argue with people about the Word of God. But sometimes I'm silent when I need to speak because I don't want to deal with it. That's just the truth. Sometimes I'm silent when I should speak because I don't want to deal with it. But why? Why don't I want to deal with this? And it's different for different people. For some people, you worried about what people are going to say about you, what people are going to think about you, how it may evolve from this setting and context to being blown out of proportion over here or over there. Uh, I, I love the, the whole cancel culture thing, right? Like there are people that will not say what they want to say that are, you know, entertainers or politicians. or They won't say what they want to say. Even if they believe what they're saying is true, they won't say it because they fear the repercussions. We're like that. I know I'm like that sometimes. Like if I post this, what will this mean for my job? No matter how true I, I believe it is. But at what point am I willing to not stand for the truth or not even just not stand. At what point am I not willing to defend or fight for the truth? For fear of some type of persecution or backlash. Had Paul and Silas been concerned about that? Maybe they wouldn't have been praised in the same way. It, it would have been a silent praise. You know, we like to pray in our heads. Y'all pray in your head. We got pray in our head. We worship, we praise in our head. You know, that loud, absorbent, non-soundful clap to the Lord. Because God forbid I'm just like that overt with it. At work when something good happens or when you overcome something or maybe when... It ain't good happening, and I just need to be like, Jesus, I need you. And I don't even feel comfortable enough to say that out loud. And we wonder why the world is continuing to win the fight, why the kingdom's not being advanced. Because we're not stepping up. The word says this. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. I'm sorry, this is Matthew 5, 11, and 12. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. First Peter 3, 15, 16 says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keep it in clear, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you and your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. We cannot outrun persecution for standing for the truth because there are less people standing for the truth than there are not. And no one likes to be told they're wrong. No one likes to be exposed. No one likes to feel like they're being judged. And even when you speak the truth and there is no judgment, guess what people feel? Because what is the Spirit here to do? Convict. That's, what, that's the Spirit's job. The Spirit's just doing what He does. But let's be real. There's time where we won't say what we need to say because we're afraid of the persecution. 
We're afraid of how it's going to be received. Sometimes we're afraid what we're about to say don't line up with how we've been living. I've been there. Preaching to the choir. And so when you have these people, when you have a jailer that has a God-appointed moment, will we speak up or will we be silent? See, Paul ended up in jail for casting out a demon, setting somebody free. He ended up in jail for doing the work. All this lady was doing was following them around, telling the truth. How often do we allow the devil to just kind of keep doing his thing? Finally, the spirit of the God rose up in Paul and said, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. The spirit that is in me will no longer allow me to deal with your foolishness. So I'm going to take the authority that I have in me, speak to this situation, and it's done. I'm not thinking about what's going to happen after that because... Right now, this is the assignment. Man, you do the right thing. Unintended consequences happen. In the military, if you do the wrong thing for the right reason, are there not consequences? I just saved the whole world. You were out of the chain of command. Dishonorable discharge. Brig. But I did what needed to be done, but it's not what we told you to do, how we told you to do it. It's not the way we do things. We get like that sometimes. We be trying to deal with the devil the wrong way. We try to deal with life situations the wrong way. We take our thinking that we brought into the situation, not that which we've been trained to do through the word, and apply it and think that this mug is about to work out the right way. It sounded real good when I said it to myself. You ever had those moments in my ideas? Like when I worked this out in my head, it was like perfect. And it did not work at all. And that's how we, we do things though, when we get so caught up in ourselves and trying to figure it out, and part of that is a maturity issue. Look at this. It says, um, I got a bunch of scriptures, but I'm going to, uh, we'll do this. Go, 1 Peter 2.12 says, live, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits, Right? Take that one. And then Philippians 4, 9, you guys have that. I, I want to get to the point I was just making, but I wanted to make sure I gave you those scriptures. We can't represent Christ well without maturity in him. And we can't mature in him if we don't go through things. Okay? <laughs> Excuse me. We cannot mature in Christ if we don't go through things. Now, Everybody is going to go through things, so it's not a matter of just going through things. It is how you go through them that determines whether you are maturing or continuing to cycle. 
How am I applying spiritual principles, the Word of God, the truth to this situation and allowing that to lead me through the situation? Versus all of the other voices, ideas that are out there. And this is where I get back to the jailer and the prisoner. There are a lot of ideas out there, guys. A lot of ideas on ways to deal with a lot of things that you're going through. Not all of those ideas, as good as they sound, line up with the truth of the Word of God. And when we begin to apply those things, instead of the Word of God, we find ourselves off course. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, I went King James even though I'm reading the NIV, <laughs> brethren, um, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the part I like right here. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We out there just testing. We out there just trying stuff. We out there just trying stuff. This doesn't work. Man, that didn't work. Uh, um, uh, the sport of golf. I got a kid who, when he was starting this journey, he would, uh, something would go wrong. He'd swing, it go wrong. So then he would try to change his whole swing. And his coach is like, that's not the way it works. I'm teaching you what your swing needs to look like. You're not going to get it right every single time. But the more and more you do it, the more it's going to become. But it's not working. No, it's working. You just don't know. You haven't mastered it yet. We don't want to master the word. Master walking in the spirit. Master living in the truth. We just be trying stuff and trying stuff. That didn't work. We trying stuff and trying stuff. That didn't work. Just because you did the math problem wrong the first time don't mean it doesn't work. You just still learning how to do it. And I feel like that's how we are in the Word. And so we're trying to test and approve things without using the right baseline. And so when someone tells you something that's counter to the Word of God that sounds logically good, it's like, yeah, that, that makes sense. But it doesn't take you where God wants you to be. James 1, and 1 verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The reason that Paul and Silas were able to respond the way that they did was because they were mature. Because they had been through some things already where they had to pray and worship through them. They had been through some hard situations where they continued to speak the truth and through that continued to see God deliver. And God delivering them from one situation didn't mean another situation wasn't coming. What it meant was they were now more prepared 
to walk through that situation and impact people like the jailer. Everything that God is bringing us through is for someone else in addition to ourselves. Everything he's bringing us through is for someone else. It could be your kids, it could be a family member, it could just be a stranger at the store. You don't know. It could be a coworker. But how you manage these hard situations, how you manage failure, how you manage disappointment, how you manage broken relationships, how you manage all of these different things that come to you, unjust, unfairness, how you manage that is a testimony to others. A challenge to us this morning is to get beyond that complacency, get beyond ourselves, honestly, that's really what it is for me, is get out of the way. Get out of the way. In my own mind, get out of the way. God, what are you saying? God, what do you want? Let me test and approve what is right, what is righteous through this, through godly counsel. You ever go to somebody that you knew was going to tell you what you wanted to hear? Huh? Like, it's some phone numbers you passed up to get to theirs because you was like, no, that one's risky. They're going to tell me what I don't want to hear. There is a world that needs the truth, the truth that we are getting day in and day out. And our light will be the light that they need. Our representation of Christ will be the answer for when their earthquake comes. And if you go and finish this chapter, you'll see that this whole man's family was saved through this encounter. And not only that, but Paul and Silas were blessed. The jailer took them out washed their wounds, fed them. As we are doing God's will, he's going to be looking out for us. But it's going to be a sacrifice for us, for someone else's freedom. Amen? Father God, thank you. I thank you for the examples that exist in your word. I thank you, God, that there were men and women who lived this thing, God, who fought the fight, Father God, who were great examples for us. Father God, I pray that you would forgive us, Father, for just allowing convenience, allowing fear, allowing other ambitions, Father God, to take us away from the truth. Allowing our emotions, feelings to drive us, Father God, instead of your word and your truth. God, this world is suffering. This world is suffering, and you need your soldiers to stand up. 
You need your soldiers to stand up, to speak up, to be bold, to be loving, to be honest, to be brave. Forgive us where we failed you, Father God, in those areas. Forgive us where we failed you, Father. Pray that you would raise us up. Raise us up, Father. I want to make a call today and, and, and really more of just you recognizing where you are and saying, hey, God, the time is now. There are some adjustments that I need to make. There are some things that I need to, to do differently. I'm going to ask you to just stand on your feet, and we're going to finish this prayer. Uh, if that's you in the building. When someone else is suddenly happens, God, your children are standing saying, let me be used. Let me be used so that they may come to the knowledge of who you are. Lord, I ask you to protect the hearts that are standing in this place today. Because it is not always an easy road to tow. Because people will talk, Father God. Because there will be emotional hurt, Father God. And even sometimes, God, there's just things from our own past that these situations bring up that we have to work through that are hard, Father God. But we ask you to be with us. We know you will, but Lord God, may we rem be reminded that you are with us, that you are covering us, that you are standing in front of us, shielding us and protecting us, Father God. See your children, Father. We say that we want to be the representation of you that will draw men to the truth. And that is why we stand here today. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. If you are in here today and maybe you are the jailer, you are the one that doesn't know God. You may have heard of God. You may have had a concept of God. But by knowing God, meaning having accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, ready and willing to walk in the freedom that comes in a life surrendered to Him. Because that is what this is about. And so if you're in this building and you don't know Christ and you want to know Christ, I'm going to ask you to just stand up real quick, raise your hand, and we'll pray with you. Okay. Awesome. Well, Father God, I pray that you would cover each and every one um, that's standing today, Father God. And may your glory, may your glory shine through them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I think Pastor Jason is going to come up with announcements and the uh, benediction. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful word and that truth and that inspiration to us this morning. Amen. Can we give God glory? Thank Brent for allowing God to use him to challenge and encourage us this morning. Are we willing to live sacrificially so that others can find the freedom in Jesus? Amen. Question for us to ponder today and the rest of this week as we move ahead to what God has for us. Before we wrap up, let me just give you a few announcements. I want to make sure you're aware of a few things that are happening here in the next couple weeks. Uh, next Saturday, the ladies are gathering here in this building uh, for their if, if gathering. If you haven't heard about it, it's not too late. 
uh, you are a woman and you want to connect with other women and learn more about Jesus and connect with him, you should be here. So you're all invited. There's a QR code in the back along with the screen where you can get registered if you have questions. My wife, Sonia, and Pastor Corey Glashani, they are leaders of Just Be Women's Ministry, and you can find them up front and ask any questions, but we just encourage all ladies to come. A powerful time of fellowshipping and worshiping together and receiving some teaching and inspiration from the word of the Lord. Amen? So that's next Saturday. Um, I want to tell you, uh, I don't know if it's kind of an announcement, I guess, but uh, many of you know that for the last, man, five years or so, we've been part of the Mosaic Initiative, which is a network of 12 churches in Waukegan that have been devoted to, to serving our community, serving young adults, and, and being the church of God together. Well, we get a chance to kind of take that into another level of practice. Um, I got a recent call from my brother, Pastor Eugene Edwards, of a place called Home Church. They've been meeting in the Boys and Girls Club just a few blocks from here, and they uh, had to relocate for the summer because of work that was happening in the building. And so we've invited them to share our space. So it, it doesn't necessarily impact what we do, but we just want you to know what's happening. So beginning next Sunday through the summer, they're going to they're gonna come after we're out of here, and they begin their services at 1 p.m., and they're going to share our building uh, they have uh, services and small groups and different activities that they do on Sunday afternoon. So uh, so if you're leaving a little later and you see some other folks coming in, yet you know that's what's going on. And if you just want to like extra time in the Lord and, and you want to have a second church service, hey, you can hang around and stay with them and join them at 1 o'clock. We love them and we, we, we can share sheep. It's all good. Amen. So we're blessed to have that opportunity to be able to serve them and for to be hospitable to them. So we just got, wanted you guys to be aware of what was happening. And then the weekend after that, we are going to have our annual church picnic. Praise the Lord. And uh, we can pray that we get a day like today, sunny and, and beautiful and not too cool and not too hot. But uh, that is Sunday, uh, June 11th. We will... Oh... Yeah, it's it's Bowen Park, B-O-W-E-N. Bowen Park is somewhere at somebody's airport, I think. So it's okay. Bowen Park is like it's like just over there. Uh, Golf Road, Sunset, and Sheridan, Sheridan, and I don't know if it's Sunset or Golf. You know, like just over there by the baseball field. If you can't find it, come to service at 10 a.m. because we will have service here. You can come dress comfortably and casually, bring some friends, bring some family. You can even bring people you don't like. It's okay. Just bring some people, okay, so they can join us in service, and then we'll caravan over there. You can follow people if you don't know where you're going. Uh, we'll have a good time, uh, different activities, games, most importantly, food. So speaking of, you can see the, the headline on this announcement is bring a dish. So our, our part as a church body, we commit to providing the, the meat, the protein, Okay, the, the ribs and, and the burgers and all that kind of stuff. We just need people to bring side dishes and desserts. And there's a list in the, on that back table. I appreciate some of you signed up last week. But we still need some, some more because we want to be able to eat to the, to the fullness and enjoy ourselves. Amen. And Pastor Corey's not up here, but I know he was struggling this week because I didn't see anyone sign up for Puerto Rican rice last week. So some of y'all that have that anointing, that, that cultural, that, oh, praise the Lord. The, 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 we just felt that, that Puerto Rican wave come through, praise the God. So, all right, we're going to have that. We're going to have some other good things. Sign up, bring a dish. We also need people to sign up to help uh, cook, clean up, uh, even maybe work with the kids. we got some other things happening. So it's going to be a good time. So we're uh, two weeks away from that. So sign up at the back table. Uh, and Make sure you do that before you leave, okay? Uh, let me just check my list. I think I've got everything. So why don't you stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. I want to challenge you to, if you didn't do it earlier, go greet and meet, introduce yourself to somebody that you may not know or you like. I kind of know your face, but I don't know your name. Let's, let's connect with somebody new today before we leave. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed time to be together, for your presence is with us, and we are God, grateful to be able to receive from you in so many ways. And we pray now that as we go, we would 
not just keep that which we receive to ourselves, God, but we would share it, Lord. And as we've been challenged in your word, that we would go, God, and be ready. Be ready to testify. Be ready to, to worship, even in the midst of, of some shaking and some, some shattering around us, God, that you would use us, that others would want to come and they would see the goodness of the Lord in us and what we do and how we think and how we act and, and the way we talk, God. Use us this day, even, God, in this week for your glory so that others can experience the goodness that we have from you. Bless your people now. Watch over and protect us until we meet again or until you return. We pray in the matchless name of Jesus. The church said, amen, amen. God bless you all. Meet somebody new. Enjoy some time of fellowship and enjoy this beautiful day.